Okay. I'm going to switch to the slides faster um, and uh, talk through a bunch of uh, different things. Just, just by way of introduction, um, you got the bio. My name is Santosh. I live right here in Saratoga. That's right. Works. Oh, okay. Um, born in India, I went to college in Australia, Sydney. Uh, primarily because I could play cricket in Sydney um, and I could not play cricket in America. Uh, at, le at least not when I was going to college. And then I ended up here during the dot com boom. Half the audience doesn't know what the dot com boom was. In 2000, uh, back in 2000, uh, what ended up happening was uh, a lot of the internet came online and then uh, the stock market crashed big time. That's the short description of it. So I'm, I'm a product of the Y2K boom, so to speak. Uh, this is an interesting uh, slide because my first job was at PayPal. After PayPal, uh, I ended up at eBay. After eBay, I ended up at YouTube. And after YouTube, I ended up uh, <coughs> at Google because Google bought, bought us out. And now I work at Meta, I guess. So WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram. What I'm trying to say, I, I'm probably similarly responsible for a substantial amount of the human population spending their time online. For good things, for bad things, uh, for a variety of things. But regardless of what they do, what ends up happening is when you work um, in environments like this, you end up having uh, a job that's essentially 24 by 7. So if, if you think about uh, uh, what Ali was saying is right, there's always somebody online. When you're sleeping, somebody else in the world is online, right? And as long as people are online, my servers are working. What that means is that essentially I don't sleep much, right? Speaking, uh, uh, sleeping much, um, you speak a lot, I guess. Uh, and this means that you usually have to find alternative ways of an outlet. Figure out what an outlet should be, figure out what a stress relief should be. Uh, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, or makes Jill a dull girl, I guess. Uh, right? Uh, so, what I want to talk about today is some of the things that have worked for me and see if uh, you can borrow some sort of uh, things and take it from there. So, what I tend to do is kind of extreme. I don't uh, advise this for everybody. I just try to do things that are a little crazy, to put it mildly. I, I go bungee jumping, I go do Spartan Bridge, etc. The theme is not sort of extreme physical activity. The theme is that you do something. It doesn't need to be physical activity. That takes 100% of your focus so that you can think about your normal day to day, what you have to do day in, day out. And to the extent that you end up doing that, turns out that when you go back to your normal daily routine, you end up having a much better chance. You end up being refreshed, being focused. So, uh, this was about, I think, last year, around October, I was like, what should I do? So, at work, we have these posters that basically say, what would you do if you weren't afraid? So, I assumed I would go and climb uh, Kilimanjaro. How many of you know how tall it is? Any idea? Guesses? It's about 19,000 feet. Uh, so it's, it's fairly big. For those of you who know Mission Peak here, Mission Peak here, if your climb rate is, is close to 2,000 feet. So, uh, Kili, uh, Kili is, is one of the seven uh, big peaks in the world. It takes about six, seven, eight days to climb, depending on how fast you do it. And it's tall enough. After 12, 13,000 feet, usually people tend to need oxygen. Sometimes people uh, need it 12,000, sometimes at 15,000. So, we ended up uh, saying that, hey, let's go give it a shot. And it's in Africa, as, as, as hopefully you know. And it's pristine. It is right on the equator, but, it's, but it still has no all year long. That's, that's how tall it is. So, so that's a pro that basically uh, goes that if you want to go fast, you go alone. So if, if I wanted to climb Kili fast, I should probably have climbed it alone. But no, we have to go far. It takes six, seven, eight days to climb it, right? So we ended up uh, assembling a team, and that 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 uh, is uh, all the friends who actually agreed. We had a group of ten, five backed out, so we left with five. Uh, people back out uh, when the day comes closer and closer, right? Uh, 
The point I'm trying to make here is not about the team, is that almost everything I'm trying to say here is to translate sort of my Kili experience into things you can translate into your real life. Make sure that when you're doing something that you don't do it alone is the macro point here, right? Have your friends, have your family. Uh, as kids, you tend not to lean on family as much as you should. Uh, it's, uh, because mom and dad are cool until you're 10 and after you're 21. In between, not so cool. This is my observation. And when you do a long climb, and when in, in the same way when you're in high school, every day feels like a week, right? Every day you have like 15 assignments due, seven APs due, a, a bunch of things happening. But that's the name of the game. But if the simple way to do it is just just proceed, just just start handling it. And if you do that, the, the results are actually quite good. That's I think day three or day four. That's scaling on the distance. You can see. Uh, what you end up doing is, as long as you add it together, life is easier, experiences are better, you can have some crazy camping uh, uh, experiences. It's crazy by the way. Those are the clouds in the distance. So you're actually uh, camping above the clouds. So it's a little trippy. And when you add it together, the teams don't always work out. You probably see seen this when you're uh, doing your school projects, right? Not everybody in your team carries his or her own weight, right? The previous week, I think something that so it's a fascinating, fascinating example. So, turns out it sounds like if you're a boy, you certainly don't carry your weight, right? But uh, they end, end up being different kind of. It, it can be contentious. By the way, the difference between contentious and orthogonal is that ortho, orthogonal means that there's two people in the team doing. Dive. They're diverging in what needs for the product to be done. And if that happens, the team's not going to achieve its status. So what should you do? You need to try to get to the synergistic part. Why? Because if you do that, then you become more than the sum of its parts. That's the essential thing you have to take away. How do you do that? You talk to each other. People don't talk. When people end up not having, not getting along, they tend to clam up or exactly talk. So please be the person who goes and initiates conversation. Have fun. It is amazing how much people open up if you let your guard down. What is amazing to me, this, this is a, a porter team. So when you climb Philly, you have a team of porters who carry your tents, your food, things of that nature. What is amazing about this group of people is that they are carrying 80, 90, 100 pounds and climbing the same mountain that we are struggling to climb. Okay. At the end of the trip, every day, they go, set camp, and start dancing. It's surreal. What you realize after a while is that it lets the guard down, takes the stress out, and everybody has to dance. Even people like you who don't really do it well, right? But it lets the guard down. Anybody, because during the whole course of the day, you ended up having a call or a fight with somebody because you want to do something, you want to take a route, you want to take a photo, whatever it is. But over time, what ends up happening is that when you let your guard down, start dancing, after that, everything just becomes a, just a little bit easier. People forget to have fun, is the point of privacy. Don't. Life's too short. In the same way, uh, a continuation of the same thing is that when people don't get along, they tend not to talk. Or when they talk, they tend not to listen. On the last day when we were climbing, um, uh, what ended up happening is the weather turned on us. So we had two days to do the, the final summit. The final summit, you start at 2 a.m. and you, then you climb for 18 hours straight to reach uh, the summit. And what ended up happening was the weather turned and so we had to decide after camping at 8 p.m. whether we have to climb the same day or wait a day. Ideally, they asked us to wait a day because you're too tired after a day of uh, hiking, uh, but we had to make the call and half our group did not want to climb because it was tired because they were already tired and then you had to climb for 8 hours again. And it was uh, it's pretty, uh, the people, the temples were flaring, right? And what was fascinating 
here was that most people had an opinion, but not listening to the opinion of the other people. Again, conflict resolution is a skill that all of you will end up developing over time. The teenagers are tough folks. You always feel nobody's listening to you. Take some time to listen to the others as well. It, <laughs> that's exactly what happened. If you listen and you, and you understand and you act, it is, it is fascinating how, how the big problems become small. You know big Lego blocks that you end up building when, when you're kids? They're made up of little blocks, right? Little blocks of listening, little blocks of understanding. And when you act, and when you actually listen, the, uh, you end up achieving what you really want to achieve. It's built on the back of those little Lego blocks is the point I'm trying to make, right? Uh, he lives pretty high up. And the other thing I wanted to highlight here was, I would say, and I think Sanita was actually talking about this, people tend to underestimate the strength of diversity. Her angle of talking was about facts. It also makes practical sense. And this is not just about uh, girls being bossy uh, and, and, and boys being assertive. That's certainly an aspect of it. Diversity has many shapes and forms, right? It's about diversity of thought, diversity of gender, color, right? And people tend not to understand that if you don't have a diverse team, you don't have the best team. A team of all boys or a team of all girls doesn't really work out, right? The reason we were able to do Kili is because we had a team that was super diverse. I mean, this is not uh, just about, uh, like I was saying, gender or color kind of thing. Every person on the team was specialized in a different subject, a different domain. Some were climbers, some were hikers, some were uh, very, very good uh, at snow climbing, some were very good at, uh, at figuring out how to climb with ropes, some had harnesses, right? You need every single skill that if you want to really achieve what you want to do. Learn to both create and be part of diverse teams. And if you don't get it, demand it. Because that's what will define your success. So, so I just had a couple of slides I want to go through about the things that I have personally learned. So learn from my mistakes, don't repeat them. This is what I guess I'm trying to say. This is one of my favorite things. People tend to worry about the confusion before and, and analysis paralysis is, is for how I tend to think about it. People tend to think more than do. It's fine. The, I'm sure, for example, uh, I was talking to uh, both of the kids when they were organizing this. There's a flurry of activity leading up to the actual event. And guess what? The event, event just goes on and happens. Don't be intimidated by the chaos. It is a precursor to greatness if you take it that way. If you don't take it that way, it is just that, chaos. So accept it, embrace it, move on. Life is not that complicated. This, uh, this is a slide all of you should probably uh, look at and, and imbibe, especially at, at, at uh, the stages of your career that uh, each year. It's a bunch of things people uh, end up doing. Few people find the middle of that. Okay, It's actually fine. The thing that most of you are pressured by, especially the teenagers, teenagers in the audience, is that you think you have to find that the one in the center today. People spend lifetimes finding it. You know, you have, you have examples all over of people who actually became successful after the age of 50. KFC was founded by Colonel Sanders when he was 69. So, navigate this more, more than actually uh, zeroing in on the center and trying to actually knock it out of the park. Make sure that you have a navigational journey. The joy is in the journey, folks, not the destination. That's when you actually learn to grow. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes big time. Try not to avoid them. Try to learn from them. It's if, if you've not made a mistake, you're not trying hard enough. You've been too, too conservative. 
So if you, so this is the bigger thing. If somebody has, when I interview people and I talk to them about what went wrong and they don't have a story, I don't know if I'll hire them. Right? That is the fundamental building block of how, how you learn, how you grow, how you become better. So try, try hard. If you fail, big deal. Try again. It is the number of times uh, you end up taking a shot. Michael Jordan has this fam famous thing because he was asked, well, how do you make the winning shot so many times? Because he said, I take them. It's very, pretty simple. If you don't take a shot, you don't get to win. Continuation of same things. Uh, we have this, uh, this is a poster I have in my house. Uh, same thing. Move fast. Break things. Rinse, repeat. Get better. Take the shot. And again, you're not alone. People tend to think about working hard. Work smart. It's a lot of uh, you know resources that you can look at, learn from, grow. Now nowadays, I mean, we didn't even have the internet growing up. Uh, what you have is a plethora of options. Use it. Leverage it. Right. I'm not saying cheat, just to be clear, chat GPT is now uh, leading to interesting issues. Uh, that's not the point. But uh, you can certainly leverage it to understand, uh, synthesize, grow much faster. Uh, you, you guys are blessed uh, about the number of options you end up having. Learn to code. Coding has now become something that people either love or hate. There's no in-between. Coding is just another skill. It's like math, it's like science, it's like uh, you, didn't, you didn't learn math on, on day one, right? You were at it for a while before you became uh, good at math. Coding is exactly the same. It's just practice, right? If you don't like, by the way, coding is an example here, uh, but uh, this is true for almost anything in life. Uh, there's this famous book, if you haven't read it. If you look at world class athletes, if you look at anybody who's world class in anything, they have spent over 10,000 hours mastering that skill. Doesn't matter if it's Tiger Woods at golf, Jordan at basketball, you know. Any skill that you want to master, you have to spend at least 10,000 plus hours mastering it. If you do, then suddenly you become world class. Nobody's born, you know. There's few Einsteins uh, in the world that are born geniuses. But all of us can be world class at any skill you want to, 10,000 hours, which is a lot of time, which is you taking a lot of shots, as you can imagine, right? Coding is an example. Any skill, any skill, folks. And finally, what I want to talk about is the world has a sympathetic ear to whatever you complain about for a very short period of time. People don't have a long period of time that they'll sit and listen to you. Maybe your dad and mom will. <coughs> Maybe your best friend will. Even they tune you out after a while. So tend to fix, move forward. This is a t-shirt I have. One of my favorite t-shirts. Fix more, wind less. Right? If you wind more and fix less, life's not going to be fun. It's an interesting thing. It is attitude matters. How you take life is what life gives you to. Hate is for social life. For social life. Failure has So does the success. And cry has three letters, but so does job. Figure out how. Where on the equation you want to learn. Dramatically different results, depending on how you do it, right? Think about it. It's a very simple thing in life. How you take life is what it gives you. This is the thing you always say, like, glass is half full, glass is half empty. What do you want it to be? Life is similar. What do you want it to be? You give, give more, it gives back more. You wind more, it winds back at you, right? Uh, don't equate life or success or school life with sort of the circumstances that surround you. Try to shape it.
So if you do what you love and you love what you do, everything else tends to fall in place. Might not fall in place today or tomorrow. Might take years. But it's fine. You teenagers, most of you are at least, right? You have a lifetime in front of you. Do that, and things things tend to fall in place dramatically well. Don't be too obsessed with finding the exact center of that Venn diagram I was talking about. As long as you end up uh, navigating your life and reaching the center eventually, you'll be okay. And uh, this journey is one person finishes again. Uh, I'm putting up all the things I have as t-shirts because they're all my favorite things. But uh, it's one person finish for all of us in some way, shape, or form, right? Now figure out how to navigate the other 99 percent and not well on one person that you are in right now. Because it's not under the bridge anyway. Right? Okay? Take it, move forward. Like I said, the glass is half full, folks. Remember that. Not half empty. Cool? Thank you.